How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here. Once again, this time we're gonna take a look at determining molar mass from colligative properties. So objectives is to use the colligative properties formulas to determine the molecular mass for solutes. So we're gonna look at the uh, freezing point depression equation. How do we go from this to get the GFM or gram forming mass and the osmotic pressure, pi equals I MRT. How do we go from that to getting the gram forming mass? Well, long story short, we're gonna do some algebra. Uh, if we're given the freezing point depression or the boiling point elevation, those two equations are pretty much identical, and the grams of solute, we can determine out or determine the solute's gram form of mass, the GFM. So we know this equation for colligative properties right here, and we know it's you know the change in the freezing point is equal to I K F times M, and we know M is for molality, and that's moles of solute per kilograms of solvent. Now this moles is going to be what we focus on. The moles of solute is gonna be equal to the grams divided by the gram form of mass. So we can go, hey, let's start substituting stuff in. Moles is grams divided by GFM. So I'm gonna plug that into the molality equation. So I know molality is grams of solute divided by its GFM divided by kilograms of solvent. So I can plug that now into this equation. And I'm gonna get kind of an ugly equation, um, but I like to do all of my rearranging and stuff before I start working with any numbers. So I could rewrite this, right? I got IKF, IKF times grams over GFM, all divided by the uh, kilograms of the solvent, right? And if I got this fraction up top, I can basically, I just move the GFM to the bottom. So I get I times KF times grams divided by the GFM times the kilograms of solvent. So now I can get the GFM by itself. I do a little rearranging. I times each side by GFM and I divide each side by the freezing point depression and I get a, uh, a much nicer looking equation, right? I get GFM of the solute equals I times KF times the grams of solute that you use divided by the kilograms of solvent times the freezing point depression. Now the boiling point elevation equation is gonna look identical to this except the KF is gonna be KB. All right, example problem. We got a solution created by dissolving 15 grams of a non-volatile, non-electrolyte solute in 100 grams of water, and the freezing point of the solution is negative 1.55 degrees Celsius. What is the gram forming mass? So, uh, all right, I'm gonna backtrack for a second. So we got these three equations. What you could do is you could go, uh, hey, let me solve for molality, and then once I got molality, let me solve for moles, and then once I got moles, solve for the GFM. But when you do all of those steps separately, you end up rounding numbers and losing digits, and you end up with a less than accurate answer. You could be more accurate by doing it all in one step and saving all the rounding for the end. So that's what we're gonna do here, right? So I know from my previously worked out algebra, the ground flow of mass is gonna be equal to the I times KF, times the grams that I use divided by the uh, kilograms of solvent times the freezing point depression. So if I plug it in, it says a non-volatile, non-electrolyte solute, tells me that the Van Hoft factor is one. The KF for this is at 1.86 uh, degrees Celsius per molal times, how many grams did we use? 15 grams, 15.0 grams divided by uh, kilograms of solvent used, 100 grams of water is 0.1 kilogram times the freezing point depression. Because it's water, I know originally it should be zero. Now it's negative 1.55. So the change in the freezing point is 1.55 degrees Celsius. Now when I plug and chug those numbers into my calculator, I get 180 grams per mole. That's it. That's how you do that. All right, let's take a look at the other equation, some more algebra. We know that the osmotic pressure pi equals IMRT. We know that molarity, that capital M, is moles of solute per liters of solution. And I know that moles is again, grams divided by GFM. So if I took that grams divided by GFM and plugged it in for moles and molarity, I get grams divided by GFM divided by liters of solution is my molarity. Now I can plug that all in to the molarity in my equation. I get this ugly looking equation. But again, I could rewrite it. The osmotic pressure has to equal I R T times grams divided by the GFM times liters of solution. Now, I just rearrange. Times each side by GFM divided by pi, and I end up with the gram formula mass 
is going to equal I R T G divided by pi liters of solution. So again, you could do like kind of problems go, hey, if they give me everything, I can solve for my molarity. If I know my molarity, I can solve for my moles. If I know my moles, I can solve for my GFM. If they give me grams. But again, it's going to be better if you just deal with letters instead of all these numbers and round to make errors and punch the wrong numbers in. So example problem. Solution is created by dissolving 10 milligrams of a protein in enough water to make 10 milliliters of solution. It has an osmotic pressure of 3.24 torr at 25 Celsius. What is the molecular mass of the protein? So it being a protein is telling us that its Van Hoff factor is 1. It's a non-electrolyte. So I go back. I got my gram formula mass equals I R T G on pi um, times liters. So, you know, I is one. So I got one times my R. If I'm using Tor, I got to make sure I use the correct gas constant 62.36, but it's um, liter Tor over mole Kelvin times the Kelvin temperature, so two, 25 degrees Celsius plus 273 gives me 298 Kelvin times the, uh, the grams, well 10 milligrams is going to be 0 0.01 grams. Now divide that all by the osmotic pressure, which is 3.24 torr times the liters of solution, while well, 10 milliliters of solution is gonna be 0 0.01 liters. Now when I plug and chug and I get all that, I get 5,736 grams per mole, and you may be looking at that going, hey, that's a huge number, but proteins can be very large molecules, so that's totally a reasonable answer. All right, summarize. Can you use the colligative properties formulas to determine the molecular mass for solutes? Namely, those two equations. I hope so. I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.